Hey guys, it's Jenny, and today I am going to show you how to use version 3 of SmartCut. And this one is pretty cool because it allows you to selectively mask parts of your image. So this is the image that I created for this class, and I made this using Fresco and my iPad. And you can find it under the file section of the Facebook group, White Toner Transfer Support Group. I will also be providing the masks that we use today, and you can also find those in the file section. So let's go ahead and get started. So um, I'm using a Uninet iColor 550 for this. Um, let's go ahead and set up our queue. Now I just updated my Pro rip. So I want to go ahead and set my Uninet two-step select queue up. Notice that it, you've got Uninet two-step select, Uninet two-step select with holes, and then Uninet two-step select with stripes. Now I like to make sure that when I'm using the two-step select without holes or stripes that I have my ink removal tab unchecked. So if I've got text or something in my design, I do not want any kind of uh, any kind of transparency to show up. And you know, most of the images that we use are raster based, which means that they are pixel. They're made of pixels, and so on the edges of text, there can be a little bit of transparency, and so you can get some jagged lines. So I like to uncheck ink removal. Uh, I want to make my blacks. I do this for every single image that I print. Uh, make those 20 dark. I'm using graphics. So I like my personal favorite settings are a chroma of 10. Um, I've got my choke at a medium. So I want to save this. So it's always like this when I choose the Uninet two-step select. So I'm going to go over to Q and I'm going to go to my properties. And I'm just going to go ahead and create a print mode. And that way, every time I choose Uninet two-step select, that will be my choices. So I'm going to hit save. And I'm going to override the current queue. And then hit OK. So now I'm going to bring in our image. And normally, I would not use an image that had a black background. But I want you to be able to see it in this video. So let's choose this image with the black background. And we'll wait for it to load. Okay, so now that it's loaded, I'm just going to click on it and I'm going to go up here to Jobs, Split Image Using Smart Cut. Okay, so this is the image that we're going to split. And notice that now you have two different um, things that you can do here you can mask it or you can split it. Or you can do both. And so in this video, we are going to do both. So we're going to click on this Apply Mask button. And interestingly enough, you have to, have to actually supply your own masks. And what I have found is that your mask needs to be a white background with black uh, as your you know, distress factor or your holes. So I'm going to go to Downloads. And I have made several masks for the group. So let me go ahead and choose them. I have to do it one at a time. So I'm going to hit open. And I'm going to bring in dots. I'm going to open that one. So we're going to actually use all of these masks. And let's see, I've got ants, dots, grungy. Let's do vertical lines and angle lines. Okay, so every one of these masks has been applied to the whole image, so it looks terrible. So let's take, take the masking out one at a time. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to highlight the one I want to use. So it's in blue. And I'm going to click this, this palette with the minus sign. And I'm just going to, from the left, I'm just going to drag across the image. And you know what? I haven't tried this yet, but we may be able to do that on all of them. So let's select them all. And let's get rid of the whole mask. 
Okay, that worked. Okay, so let's now mask one at a time. So let's start with the ants. And there's several different ways you can do this. So you've got these four boxes down here, um, the plus and the minus. So the minus is going to take away the mask from a specific color. The plus with the palette is going to add a mask to that specific color. And then this section here that is, looks like a little a piece of some sort or maybe a puzzle piece, the one with the minus, that's going to remove the mask from that section. And this one is going to add the mask to that colored section. So this is done by color. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So for the ants, we want to add uh, to just a section. So I'm going to click on this plus, And then I think I'm going to do ants on the yellow. Let me make that bigger. So what, what, what I don't want to do is mask any of this text. So if I were to choose, let's subtract that by just clicking that minus sign. But if I chose this plus with the palette and I chose yellow, it's going to mask all of the yellow. And so I don't want that. So let's go to the minus and let's choose the yellow again. And it's going to take the mask away from all of that. So I just want this one yellow piece masked with the ant. So let's hit the plus and let's hit that yellow. All right. So now the dots, I think I'm going to do on the pink. Now, if you'll notice up here, so the Again, it has to be contiguous, so the color has to be touching. And this white piece right here has split this pink, so you have to make sure that you click all parts of that section. Okay, so now let's go over to Grungy, and let's do the red in Grungy. And now let's do the vertical line. So let's do this blue section in vertical lines. And again, I missed this part, so we want to click on that. And I also noticed that on the red, I missed this little section up here. So let's go and add that. Okay, so now all of the red is done. All right, now let's, we just did vertical lines. So now let's do angled lines, and we'll do that on both edges of the balloon. All right, and now we just need to add something. Oops. All right, let's get that section there. And now we just need to add something to this orange. And I think I'm going to use the ants again for that. All right, and there's this little piece right here that we want to get. Okay. All right, so if you can see that, those are the different pieces of mask that we're going to use. So we've got the, the angled stripes, and these are at a 72 degree angle. And then we've got these little things that look like ants. Then we've got our holes, our vertical stripes or vertical lines, this grungy section over here in the red, more ants in this yellow, and then this horizontal line over on the orange. Okay, oops, notice what I just did. So let's get rid of that black. Okay, sorry about that. All right, so we have now applied the mask. And if we want to add to this red down here, we can. And let's make that grungy again. Now what happens if we have them both highlighted, the ants and the grunge, and we click that section? Well, it's going to add both masks, and so I don't really want to do that. So let me go back over here and subtract that out, and I just want, we'll do the grunge. So I'm going to go back and click on the plus and hit that grunge. Now, if I wanted all the red, and notice that we have this red up here chosen, um, I could hit this plus, 
and that's going to also do this red up here and it added some grunge down here so let's undo that And let's go back over and just add it to this section because I don't really want this up here. All this black is going to be removed, so there's plenty of negative space there. All right, so I think that looks pretty good. We Let's just check and make sure we have all of our non-contiguous sections rasterized. Okay, we do. So now let's move on and all we have to do now is hit split and what I like to do is rotate this especially if I'm using A4 because I find I just do a better job of splitting it so I've rotated it now when you're splitting an image that's a graphic you want to try and find the cleanest split line that you can find and I think that's going to be this this area right here because the black is going to be removed so I should be able to piece that together pretty easily so I'm going to change my height to nine and a half so this is going to be like 10 by 15 maybe so hit OK and it automatically actually let's do that 9.75 hit OK Let's reset that to the original. All right, 9.75. Okay, so we're going to be right around 10, uh, 10 by 15. All right, so now we're going to just click this gear here. And you can select from all these different drop downs. And you can play with custom. I haven't quite figured that one out yet. Uh, but we're going to go with A4. I'm going to hit OK. And then this one is also going to be A4. And if you see here, A4 is actually 8.27 inches wide. So it's making sure you have enough room uh, to have a gutter around the image when you go back into ProRip so you don't cut off any edges. All right, so now let's move these boxes around. So I'm just going to drag this one on the left over to the right until I'm right at that white line without going over it all right and i just use my arrow up and down key to center that all right and now let's do the blue section on the right and again i'm going to get right up on the edge of my graphic let me move that up okay and that looks pretty good i think it's probably going to split it right around here so i'm going to change it to graphics and choose split I am going to be putting this on a dark garment, so I just click here. And so it has split it right there. I'm going to hit save. And it's going to send it right back into Smart Cut. So I just hit yes. And let's wait for that to load. And I'm just going to click on it and center it to the page. Do the same thing over here, center it to the page. And now all we need to do is knock the black out. So I'm going to go to Jobs, Production Plugins, Knock Me Black Out. And that's going to just remove all the black. Nothing really to change there. Let's reset that. So we're just going to remove the black, hit OK. And then on this one here, we're going to go to Jobs, Production Plugins, Knock Me Black Out. It's removed all the black. We're going to hit OK. And now there's one more thing that I want to do. So this image has red and orange, and it is a PNG file. So I personally find that that can get a little tricky sometimes. So I'm going to show you how to make sure that your red and orange is the exact color that you put in um, or pretty close so i'm going to go up here and i'm just going to click on the job color replacement tool which is the palette button and i'm going to click on the red 
And so this red actually had 20 cyan. So I'm just going to change it to 20. And it had 100 magenta and 100 yellow. And that's the color the red should be. So I'm going to hit apply. And then I am going to click on this orange. And this one is actually zero cyan, 78 magenta, and 100 yellow. And I'm going to hit apply there. And now all I need to do is click this X, and it's just going to close it out. And let's do the same thing to this one. So we're going to go hit the palette tool, the job color replacement tool. And I'm going to do the red again. And again, that one is 20 cyan, 100 magenta, and 100 yellow. Apply and close it out. And now if we want to make sure that our white text is going to print, let's go ahead and rip that. So rip only. View raw data. Let me get that in the middle there. Let's make that just a hair smaller. Okay, and so you can't tell the white text is there. So we're just going to hit this view all colors as black. And now we can see, A, what our spacing is going to look like. And make sure that our white text is nice and crisp, which it is. And you can see, you know, the negative space that we've added to the image. So that looks great. I'm going to click out of that one. And let's go ahead and rip this other one. And let's view the raw data. And let's go ahead and view all colors as black. So now we can see what that's going to look like. So that looks good. And it is ready to print. So I hope this helped you guys. And I'm still learning uh, how to use the Smart Cut, but um, if you have any questions, go ahead and ask them in the Facebook group. And I hope you guys have a great weekend.